Native Americans of Silmar. Native Americans are believed to have been living in Silmar for eight to 10,000 years, although it could have been thousands of years longer. They were of Shoshonean descent and known as Tongva and or Gabrielino. There were two villages or communities in Silmar. Pesekniga was located around the area of Bleecker and Havana streets, since there has always been a natural spring here and the Indians lived where there was water. Each community was believed to have at least a hundred people living in them, probably more. The other village was located at the mouth of Pacuema Canyon and called Mahugnaga. They didn't live as tribes but as family units. There was probably several generations of families living in each village. These Indians are described as short, stocky, and muscular. They had broad flat faces, dark skin, and black hair. The men didn't wear any clothing at all when the weather was warm. The children were usually naked as well. The women only wore a short skirt, which looked like two aprons, one in front and one in back. These skirts would be made out of strands of twine, woven from the fibers of the yucca, dogbane, or milkweed plants. During the winter months, men, women, and children would wear rabbit and deer skins. The men would sometimes braid their hair and tie it in place with a hunting knife, a reed, a small stick, or a bone hairpin. The women decorated their hair with thin bone, shells, stones, and flowers tied with string to make themselves look more attractive. The string was made from yucca plants. Some of the women liked bangs and would cut their hair by singeing it off. The Native Americans of Silmar usually walked barefoot in the villages, but when they went searching for food or traveling, they wore sandals. These sandals were one inch thick and made out of the fibers of yucca plants woven together. Tattoos and body painting were very important to them. Tattoos were permanent, but body painting was for ceremonial purposes. Both men and women also applied tattoos on their foreheads. Sometimes the women preferred one on her chin or her chest. They used a cactus thorn, then used charcoal or the juice of nightshade leaves and rubbed it into the wound to make a blue-black tattoo. It is believed there are as many as 5,000 Indians living in the Los Angeles area in 50 communities. There are at least 10 communities in the San Fernando Valley. The Tongva Native Americans were nomadic. They traveled and traded with the other villages. The Chumash on the coast and the Channel Island natives were visited regularly, as were the natives of the Santa Clarita and San Gabriel Valleys. There is evidence of Indians from as far away as the Colorado River visiting locally and trading as well. They were nomadic also in the way they followed the harvesting of their food. They would build huts to stay in, or the huts might already be there from the previous season. After the harvest, they would go back to the main village. The women did most of the work in the preparation of the food. The men did the hunting. A lot of times a group effort was made to go out gathering plants, seeds, and roots. The men would sometimes be involved in this. They might all hunt as a group as well. One way they hunted was to chase rabbits and rodents into wading nets. They might also set fire to an area to scare the animals into the nets. When hunting individually, the men might bring home a deer or an elk. They also ate smaller game, such as birds, lizards, frogs, or insects. Grasshoppers were a favorite. The men did the work of dressing the skins and cured them with animal brains and wood ashes. They were softened by laying them over an inclined rubbing post, then rubbing and scraping the skins with stones or animal bones. The Silmar natives' main supply of food came from the plants and trees surrounding them. They ate different kinds of roots, seeds, bulbs, nuts, and berries. They were usually able to gather enough food to last them from season to season. Their main source of food were acorns, and there were plenty of oak trees to supply them with those. The women and children did the majority of the gathering and preparing of the acorns to make them edible. One way the men helped was to climb into the oak trees and shake the branches. When the acorns fell to the ground, the women and children would collect them. Next, they would have to crack the shells to get the acorn nuts out. This work was very hard and tedious. While the women and children were gathering the acorns, they would take time to sing and play. When collecting the acorns, each woman wore a basket on their heads upside down. This would be attached by a strap to a larger basket which hung down their backs. The upside down basket was a cap, protecting their heads against the chafing of the strap. They would let the acorns dry in the sun, then remove a brown papery skin. Most of the time, the acorns were pounded into meal with a stone mortar and pestle. Acorns have tannic acid in them, which made them very bitter to eat. There were several ways to wash the tannic acid out. They would start by digging a hole in the ground, then line the hole with pine needles, sand, and small pebbles. They would fill the hole with acorn meal, and then pour hot water over it many times. The bitterness would wash into the ground. 
Then they could make bread, puddings, and hot cereal. Berries and nuts were added for flavor. The acorn meal was also made into cakes and cooked. There were also plenty of seeds growing in Silmar and the surrounding area which were gathered as food. The women used a paddle, similar to the shape of a tennis racket, but woven like a basket. Sometimes they wore the same cap and large basket as when collecting acorns. They collected the seeds by beating the tall grasses with the paddle and dumping them into the larger baskets. These seeds were ground on a stone slab called a matate. Another stone in the shape of a small rolling pin was used to grind the seeds into meal. It was cooked and eaten in the same way as the acorn meal. Most of the Indians' foods were eaten cold or just warm. This helped preserve their teeth. They usually had their teeth for all of their lives. The yucca was very useful for them. It was plentiful and the fruit was sweet and juicy. It could be compared to a similar flavor of green apples. They roasted the stem and pits with hot coals for another treat. The flowers were also eaten. The fruit was eaten raw, roasted, or pounded into meal. The fibers were used to make nets, baskets, mats, sandals, straps, baby cradles, and even hairbrushes. They also pounded the roots to make foam, which they used for soap. They bathed every day. Cactus plants were also a source of food. The flat pieces had the needles scraped off and were dried and stored. They would later boil these to eat them. They also ate the seeds and cactus apples. The apples were very sweet in the summer.